hello everyone welcome back to our youtube channel uh, amazon and we are continuing our web series aws for developers in this web series we uh, we just begin with a chapter a new chapter actually uh, for amazon elastic container services which are actually also known as ecs ecs is the managed services that allows you to deploy and manage your uh, docker containers at a scale uh, you can uh, you could run your application you could run your services you can uh, you could run your batch processes uh, on using uh, aws managed services so if you if you need to run um, your docker container without worrying about the underlying infrastructure so this is the most suitable services the uh, and most easy to manage services you could use so uh, it gives you ability to scale your uh, containers uh, on the fly and it gives you ability to flexible container placement uh, uh, mechanisms also it gives you more ways to integrate uh, other aws services as well so uh, in this uh, video we will see how we can set up the amazon ecs cluster and types of implementation so yeah let's begin let's begin with the uh, cluster setup so uh, first we need to search ecs so once you search the ecs or container you will see that option so uh, just click on this you will land it to this dashboard or this screen under this screen we have several options we have task definition clusters account settings so we, we are more focusing on amazon ecs so uh, click on the cluster so it gives you ability to create cluster from here uh, click on the create button so there are three types of implementation for cluster template so one is the networking only so in, when we choose this so only cluster and vpc and subnets uh, uh, we will be able to create uh, and other impl implementation type is uh, so in this uh, the uh, the capacity provider where you deployed your underlying uh, containers uh, would be the forget type um and uh, at, at this you you would be spawning up your ec2 instances uh, as the underlying infrastructure uh, and you will be creating vpc and subnets everything uh, with this uh, and then uh, this is uh, for ec2 linux uh, if you have windows containers or if you wish to deploy your containers on the windows platform so you could choose uh, this type of implementation so at the moment we are going with ec2 linux plus networking uh, so because we would like to capitalize the ECS instances instead of uh, uh, forget profiles uh, so just choose this so here we can give the name uh, we will be calling it as a test cluster uh, so uh, the provisioning model for your uh, compute capacity so there are two models a spot and on demand uh, if you click on the spot so there are two more things uh, lowest price and diversified and then from here if you if you choose the spot instance type implementation for your ec2 compute then you would need to select the instance type um, let's say you say t2 large or maybe t2 extra large so um, so you need to specify uh, that instance type you would be going for a spot type implementation for your compute but at, for the sake of this video we'll go in with on demand and um, here we need to choose the ec uh, like ec2 instance type because we are choosing uh, ec2 implementation so we'll be choosing t2 large uh, and uh, we will be calling a uh, number of instance is one and ec2 ami we are choosing with amazon linux 2 which is default uh, we have old deprecated uh, Amazon Linux one, but uh, we are not using that one. Um, if you wish to read, uh, 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 set up uh, more hard drive or more storage on your uh, EC2 instances for EC, sorry ECS instance, you can define the storage. Maybe you you more you would need more in the storage. Uh, from here, you can define the key pair if you would like to access your ECS instances. At the moment, for the sake of video, we are we are just leaving it as a default. So from here, either you have uh, any other default VPC, or if you wish to create new VPC, you can define your networking parameters from here. Uh, we already have one VPC, so we are choosing that VPC, and from there we will be creating inst uh, inst ECS instance in the private zone. So we are creating, we are choosing the subnets, private subnets. Uh, we have some more private subnets, so we could choose uh, one or two uh, uh, subnets. Uh, either because uh, we are spawning of our instance in, in the private subnet, so we are just leaving it as a default for assigning IP, uh, IP, IP addresses. 
uh, here you can create new security group uh, and allow the ports that you wish to open uh, so this is the IAM section for container um, I am going with the default ECS instance role uh, if you would wish to enable the cloud watch for a uh, container you could check mark so you you would be able to see the container logs uh, in your cloud or cloud watch cloud watch dashboards so yeah th this is uh, uh, this is it about the, the ECS cluster setup so we just need to click on the create button so once it is done it will uh, we will be able to see our ECS cluster so it takes a little while uh, like it it would take uh, one or two or three minutes maybe so because it's pro it, it provisions several things like uh, it provision the ECS uh, instances VPC and uh, availability zone this, this is some uh, this is everything running from the cloud uh, cloud formation so it's it provisioned the auto scaling group so it, it provisions some more resources so you could see our cluster is created if we go to view cluster so we can see uh, our this is our details about our cluster uh, so there are things service task ecs instances metrics and schedule task so uh, if we go to ecs instances so we will see uh, our uh, instances uh, which is actually uh, for your cluster uh, it will be your compute capacity so yeah uh, we have seen one instance uh, if we click on the ECS instance it will navigate to EC2 instance so we can see uh, we have one EC, uh, EC2 instance in our ECS cluster so if if we need to add more um, resources or capacity to our ECS cluster so we could define from here like if some if uh, your manager or someone says we need to add more capacity to our ECS cluster so what we can do is we can go to the capacity provider and we can click on the create button from here we, uh, we can we can choose the cluster name and then we can choose the capacity provider we could say ec2 uh, capacity engine and then we could uh, select a, a auto scaling group uh, either we create a new auto scaling group if you don't if you don't have or we can create uh, we can use the existing one or we can use the new one as well so yeah uh, we can choose existing one as well if you do not have uh, any scaling group so you could navigate to the ec2 uh, ec2 dashboard click on the auto scaling group from here you can create a new uh, auto scaling group like the way we normally create so uh, target capacity we could say 100 percent and we, we could say manage the scaling yes it it would use its uh, aws own cloud watch matrices to scale up and scale down your ECS capacity uh, manage termination policy protection manage termination protection uh, if we would if we if we want not to delete our ECS instances so we can uh, we can just click on the enable uh, I, normally uh, it depends so uh, this is how you can add more capacity to your cluster so from here you can you can see and observe the CPU utilization memory utilization and everything related to your ECS cluster uh, and from here you can see the task schedule which already scheduled so there are two things task and services if you wanted to provision or your application through load balancer uh, uh, so you you need to create EC ECS service if you wanted to provision uh, or any you wanted to run any batch processes like a process does not require to be accessed externally so you create uh, from here uh, maybe some ETL jobs or maybe some uh, backend processing so you could create a task from here if you want to deploy your api application api services or microservices you uh, so you would need uh, to deploy from services because uh, task doesn't give you ability to uh, provide external accessibilities like it won't create a external load balancer and, and everything but when you create a service it will gives you ability to create uh, expose your application through aws elastic load balancer uh, i hope uh, you like that video and you learn a lot if you like this video and uh, if you learn so don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel so thank you for watching this video uh, and we will see you in the next video